Do you want to know more about installing decoders in your locomotives? Well, stick around and watch this segment and see how I did on my in-scale model road, the Sahara Secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale, and welcome back to the Locomotive Shop. So this time in the Locomotive Shop, we're going to be working on an Atlas GP38. So the backstory on this locomotive, uh, Matt had gotten this for me at a show and sent it to me, decided I wanted to do some upgrades to it, and uh, as you'll see from the video, once I got into it, I was presently surprised. Um, I'm not going to ruin anything. So uh, with that, why don't you sit back, watch the video, and we'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs> Okay, so here we are getting to disassemble the chassis. So right off the bat, I noticed that there's something a little unusual about this. This board doesn't look like a normal light board. And this unit was marked as a, a DC unit. And I only got it for about $70. So up right here, I'm trying to figure out why is there all this black electrical tape. So I start pulling it off. And that's when I start seeing the wires coming off the back of the board. In all seriousness, I had taken the fuel tank off. I never bothered to look underneath. So I traced the wires down and I realized that there's a speaker underneath. Um, looks like the chassis has been professionally milled, uh, probably by Aztec, and a nice oval speaker was installed in the bottom. So at this point I decided, okay, this is great. I'm just gonna leave the speaker intact and I'm just gonna install it to the ESU board. There's a quick shot of the speaker. So even before I knew that there was the MRC soundboard uh, in this locomotive, I had made the decision I was going to go with the ESU uh, Loc Sound uh, Direct Micro board. That's 73100. Um, those boards just drop right in. They fit perfectly in the uh, Atlas GP38 uh, chassis. So early on, I made the decision. Uh, I'm going to stop using the LEDs that they give you for the headlights. I like the ones with the leads, so I can glue them up in the shell, and then the shell will come off and have enough long leads. So if I got to do work on it, I can just put it aside. Here I am installing the ESU decoder into the frame. soldering the leads for the speaker. The one thing I didn't show you is that with that LED headlight, I end up hot gluing it into the shell uh, so it stays in place. Otherwise, they kind of just move around. Now I'm just gonna add my standard details, a Sinclair antenna and a cab signal box. Once I install the antenna, I flip the shell over and I glue it in from the inside. And here's the cab signal box. I'm just getting these off of Shapeways. Uh, go over there and check them out. Uh, I can't find any other manufacturers that are making them right now.
All right, so we're getting started with our weathering. First thing I do is I take it in the booth. Uh, I take some engine black diluted with uh, alcohol, and I'm gonna get all the fan grills and grates on the side. Okay, so now I set up my airbrush with some Model Flex sand diluted with uh, three drops of alcohol in my color cup and just going to go over the whole shell and give it a fading or dusting. Okay, so now I weather the shell with some uh, Bragdon weathering powders. Now this video was done a while ago, so I didn't seal these powders in with any dull coat. And that finishes up our work. Okay, everyone, so there you go. That's how we did it. So let's talk about it. So, um, you know, it was kind of neat uh, getting this locomotive open up. I thought it was just going to be a DC locomotive, and lo and behold, there was this old MRC soundboard in there. And then when I took the fuel tank off, uh, hey, there's this oval speaker mounted in the bottom. So it looks like somebody had taken the time to uh, send that frame out to get milled and then put the, the speaker in the bottom. So I just remember from years gone by that everybody was like, whoa, that's really cool, you know, MRC soundboard, oval speaker in the bottom. So I figured, hey, let's just upgrade it, put the ESU board on the oval speaker, and it'll sound really great, right? And then I fired it up, and it was like, ooh, um, it doesn't sound that great. Uh, it just goes to show you that it's kind of dated technology now. You know, maybe five, ten years ago, we thought that was the neatest thing. Now, the, with the new Zemo cubes that I'm using, it blows that little speaker away. And uh, the ESU board is way light years ahead of the old MRC soundboard. So it's okay. Um, still get some sound out of it. You can still hear the horn, uh, get a little bit of the diesel. It sounds a little different when you 
put them together in a uh, consist. So uh, it's okay. I'm going to leave it the way it is and uh, have fun with it. And then just to finish off the project, and you know, we did the detail work and we added some nice weathering to it. So it's a really good looking locomotive now and uh, very happy to add it to the fleet. And so with that, uh, that's all I have for you this time on the Locomotive Shop. Be sure to tune in next time to see what we're doing next. Otherwise, if you're watching this video for the first time, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, don't forget to check out my Facebook page and Instagram account because I'm always loading uh, content up there, always uh, updating on daily progress. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.